Hi everyone, just started this um, webinar. Uh, let me know again if you can hear it. Uh, hi guys, hi. People trickling in slowly, that's good. Already have eight people online. Hi Andrew, good morning. Good morning. Andrew, are you from um, uh, from South Australia, was it? Somebody was from South Australia last time. Um, yeah, so if you can hear me, just please type in that you can hear me and that, uh, or and you can see me, hopefully. <laughs> That'd be great. And uh, we're going to slowly proceed to this webinar. I'm just going to probably have a look at what polls we have configured. Uh, okay, yeah, we're going to need to pre get some ready. All right, great. So you can hear me and see me. That's wonderful. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's uh, 6.05 a.m. in Australia. So as usual, let's, uh, while we're waiting for everyone to get here, let's quickly type in where we're from. And uh, Carolus already knows UK here loud and clear. Great, uh, Carolus, you're the first uh, to, to type it in. Uh, welcome from the UK or to the UK. So, yep, just type in where you're from, uh, country, city, and I'll read them out so we know who's online. So we've got Tim from South Africa, Jason from London, Mahesh from London, Michael from uh, USA, I'm sorry, I don't know, NC, New, New Carolina, I'm guessing. Uh, Modesto from Spain, hi Modesto, you're frequent now. Uh, Rosella from Daytona Beach, Florida, hello. So many people from the US, Fern, uh, Fernandina uh, Beach from the U uh, USA, uh, Mike's from there, Masik uh, from Ireland, hi Masik, you're also regular now. Um, Bill from Gig Harbor, W uh, A U S, not too good with USA states, so um, just say yes for now. Uh, Luis Sela from uh, Mexico, apologies if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Junior from Orlando, uh, Jason, uh, <laughs> I'm voting, remain. EU rocks, awesome. Uh, Paul from Suffolk, England, Michael from North Carolina, David from UK, Mike from Arizona, and John from Timmins, Canada. Wow, okay, that was that was a huge roll call. As it looks like today, we've got quite a lot of people from um, North America, from Canada, uh, especially from the US, uh, some people even are from Mexico. That's, that's really great. And at the same time, we've got uh, some of our regulars from Ireland and uh, South Africa and uh, South Australia. Awesome. Okay, so that's, that's a great start. So some people are uh, um, ju jumping in, but we'll get started with this webinar. We've got quite a lot to cover. We're talking about psychology in trading. Let me read out this um, full title, Psychology in Forex, a cold-blooded approach to trading. So this is going to be fun. It's going to be quite interesting. And um, so quite a few things. Uh, first of all, make sure to stick around to the end and you'll find out very soon why, because there's going to be something a very interesting revealed at the end. And uh, before we uh, jump on, so what we're going to do now is we're going to, while I explain how this webinar is going to be structured, I'm going to create a quick poll. And I am going to... How do okay, create poll? All right, I'm going to type in um, how uh, have you ever have you ever experienced uh, negative emotions in trading? So that's going to be our starting vote: emotions in trading. Just two simple answers: yes, <laughs> no. All right, um, let's uh, let's start this poll. Okay, but I had another option. Uh, not yet. How about that? Yes, not yet. Start. All right. So just vote for that, please, so we can get some results going, and so that we are kind of prepared for the uh, webinar. Really curious to see what your uh, thoughts on this are, and what what your experience with this is. And um, yeah, and then uh, while while we're doing that, I'm going to explain. So the webinar is going to be a structure pretty much. You know, sometimes that have like a presentation, some uh, like actual trading or some coding. Last time we had actual live coding in MQL4, and uh, we have like a mix of webinars. And sometimes I'm like, I'm all, every time at the start, I'm talking in front of the camera. Uh, so this time is going to be multi presentation, and so we won't be doing charts, we won't be doing anything with coding. So feel free to sit back, relax, have a cup of tea or coffee, and uh, just follow along. It's going to be a very casual style of presentation, which is going to go through this um, few slides that I've prepared and talk about what's the 
symptoms are quite, some quite important to avoid. All right, so let's have a look. Uh, we've got, uh, have you ever experienced negative emotions in writing? 20% of you said yes. Uh, and uh, no, 5%, and I was, this was the best part, and not yet 25%. So a uh, quarter of you already know that even though you haven't experienced these negative emotions, they're probably coming your way or later, and that is the reality of trading. So uh, in, uh, so in essence, we, we kind of split 70-30, 70% 70 70 uh, have already experienced negative emotions. Learn, uh, or I'm going to share my experience of how to deal with these kind of things and how I overcome them. All right, so let's move this presentation into my screen mode, and I'm, I can still see your comments on the left, which is good. All right, so screen share, screen two, I guess. Yep, screen two. All right, let's get rid of that. Hello, Elon Musk. And um, all right, where is my presentation? Let's get this thing started. All right, as usual, welcome to the Forex Vote webinar. Uh, this is a disclaimer. Legally, it has to be displayed for at least five seconds. Have a read through it. Just make sure that you're comfortable with everything before you proceed with watching this webinar or a replay if you're watching the replay. Um, basically, none of uh, what is said on this webinar is uh, financial or investment advice. It is all general advice and uh, should be viewed as such. Take it, uh, you should always take into account your own personal uh, financial situation and um, uh, risks and so on. So once you've read through that, we're going to continue with today's webinar. So Forex Boat Trading Academy, um, here we go. Plan for today. First of all, psychological pitfalls. So we're going to go through, actually we're going to go through 10 psychological pitfalls uh, on this webinar and we're going to discuss them slowly one by one and uh, ideally want to fit into an hour so including some Q&A at the end. Then we've got uh, takeaway tips uh, so that will be based on the psychological pitfalls that we discussed. Uh, then we'll have a statistical approach to training. So we'll discuss a bit of um, my uh, theory or my approach, <laughs> my approach to uh, dealing with these psychological pitfalls. Uh, then we'll talk about some war stories. I'll share some stories from a real life when uh, these uh, things have uh, surfaced for me when I did uh, get impacted by uh, these pitfalls that we'll be discussing. And then at the very end, make sure to stick around. There'll be a special sneak peek for what's coming for Forex Boat in the next 30 days, and even less. Even less is something very exciting come up, coming up. So if you want to have a sneak peek, stick around to the end of the webinar. All right, so let's jump straight into it. Pitfalls. Pitfall number one, unrealistic expectations. So what does that mean? Well, that means that people, This is we're talking about psychological pitfalls, right? So people come into Forex trading uh, and they expect to earn a lot of money or they expect to, even which is even worse probably, they expect to fill in a gap, a financial gap that they have in their life. You, it's hard. It's even it's, it's it's hard for me to convey how often I get uh, messages, emails, private messages on different platforms, uh, saying that, "Hey, Kirill, you know I'm such and such. I'm in a very hard uh, hardship situation. I've got a financial hardship. I'm in this situation. So on, so on. Can your courses help me?" achieve, you know, earn $10,000 in the next two or three months because I really need to pay for this, this, and this. And, you know, however, of course, that is that is heartbreaking when you hear stories like that. And uh, it's, it's um, like you always empathize with the person, but at the same time, that is not why you go into Forex trading. You cannot go into Forex trading thinking or hoping that you've got that you will fill a financial gap or pay off some debt that you have or something like that because that is the worst mentality ever and um, most likely very high probability there is a high probability that is just going to make the situation worse so do not go into forex trading with unrealistic expectations the realistic expectation uh, that comes to my mind is you I'm going into this thing called forex trading or I'm already in forex trading and I want to improve my skills and it's going to take time it's going to take effort uh, I'm going to need to learn a lot of things I'm going to be I'm going to need to be patient I'm, there will be ups and downs and you know there's no guarantee that this will 
100 percent work for me maybe this is not the right thing for me and i is i'm going into it with an open mind it's like exploring a new subject at school or it's like exploring a new kind of science and things like that and, and then i want to understand if it works for me or not and i know it will take time and the it's not guaranteed that get some. with that approach you will be more open-minded to understanding what you're doing better all right number two number two being greedy so this is a very uh, common pitfall when people start making money on forex and you know the saying beginner's luck often people do make money when they start off like very quickly and they start getting greedy and they start um, trying to make more and more and more and more or they don't close their orders on time according to the strategy they want to make more profit per order and so on and that usually turns around and uh, makes things bad so we're going to we're going to remember this uh, pitfall because it's going to be is going to come up in the war stories in fact I'm actually gonna write it down so I remember to mention it all right now we got uh, number three, over trading or trading too many currency pairs. So over trading is a is a common, very common thing with uh, or theme with uh, people just starting out into forex trading because um, you don't have enough patience. You or, or the people that are just starting into forex trading, they don't have that patience, which is required to sit and wait for the right opportunity. So you have a trading strategy. And your train strategy says, okay, you only enter when these two uh, MAs cross and, and then you have this confirmation of your signal or uh, you only enter in this certain time of the day or you look for this type of pattern. And people try to, when, they're, when they over trade, they try to see things that are actually not there. So they know that they're looking for a, a head and shoulders pattern, even though I, I don't uh, really, I'm uh, not a big fan of uh, trading. Uh, patterns like the head and shoulders but let's say they're looking for the head and shoulders pattern and then uh, they uh, see something that looks like head and shoulders but because they haven't traded for two days or for for five hours they think oh this time is it I'll, I'll let it pass and they uh, say okay that's that's a head and shoulders pattern and they enter it anyway even though it's not actually a head and shoulders pattern or trading too many currency pairs it, your strategy might be tailored to a certain currency pair and then trying to apply it to other currency pairs without having first tested it adjusted it uh, might lead to bad things so this is kind of like a, an a version of being greedy it's it's a more so just being greedy is like entering with huge lots or setting massive stop losses uh, massive stop losses and massive take profits over trading and trading too many currency pairs is kind of a softer version of that but it's still a subset of being greedy I guess next one is uh, where we're we up to number four right one two three four um, trying to win each trade so this is something we'll talk about further down when we talk about the statistical approach to trading uh, and that is kind of like how everybody I think feels about Forex when they come into it because and that's how I felt as well you you start off and you and every single trade is like your little baby it's like your little creation and you want it to be successful and then you're at the end of the day you know you're you don't want to be upset that you entered this into this trade you spend so much time thinking about it and setting it up and then it it wasn't successful excuse me <coughs> so trying to win each trade once again it doesn't work because <clears throat> Uh, as you probably have already noticed if you've even practiced on a demo account you will have profitable trades and you will have losses it's there is no magic bullet to forex trading and that's just something uh, we have to accept and that's just the way it is all right so trying to win each trade is a psychological pitfall we should try to avoid that and uh, be come to the thought that there will be losing trades and that's just the reality of life like you know sometimes you have good days in life sometimes you have bad days or sometimes you enjoy your lunch sometimes you don't really enjoy your lunch and th things like that I, I think uh, it's it makes sense that these things are normal just that we're dealing with money and that's where psychology kicks in because you know, money is the ultimate resource that we can purchase anything with so that we're trying to protect it next uh, this is I think we're up to five um, happy and unhappy so what does this mean so this is the emotional side of forex trading when you when you try to make every trade a winning trade if it's a winning trade you're happy right if it's a losing trade you're unhappy and that is the big uh, flaw so before you know we, or even maybe sometimes now you have this feeling when 
you have a profitable trade you're super excited about it it you know, you made some money or uh, even if it's on a demo account you, you you're proving to yourself you can trade forex your your system is working and you're super excited about what is going on and that you just had a profitable trade and that's you know on one hand it, it seems like a good thing right because you're gonna walk away you you're you're gonna have this feeling of a bit of euphoria you're gonna have a smile on your face you're gonna have a great day and that's actually also a pitfall no it's not a good thing if you're happy about a positive trade why well because as we discussed previously here this is the previous point trying to win each trade is a is a false uh, philosophy so they are going to be lost trades and guess what if you're happy about winning winning a trade you're going to be unhappy or even devastated about losing a trade so if you're letting yourself be emotional about positive sides of forex trading you're going to be inevitably uh, emotional about the negative sides of forex trading and what does that lead to well you know you might you might speculate that uh, well there's a balance of emotions or if I'm winning more trains than I'm, than I'm losing then I'm more often happy than I'm unhappy well number one is that no some sooner or later the markets will change and you will have to adapt your trading strategy and before you do that you will notice that you're losing more trades and winning trades and you'll become depressed <laughs> probably or un or super unhappy and number two is that why do you even want this uh, seesaw of emotions in your life why do you want to be happy you know five times a day and unhappy three times a day why do you want these ups and downs in your mood when you can just uh, completely take it out like e imagine this imagine a scenario you can be completely cold-blooded about forex trading and not worry about being happy or unhappy it's just a, a job it's just something that brings you high ideally that brings you money or something just something that you do if you're just practicing on demo account, just something that you do it's part of your routine it's like waking up in the morning and brushing your teeth or washing your hands before you eat doesn't make you happy or unhappy it's just something that you do and if you view it that way then you can seek other emotional stimulus in your life and that is the other thing that you shouldn't um, I don't believe in taking for extreme for it's not it's not a roller coaster it's not something that's supposed to make you feel emotions it's not designed for that it's designed for uh, making money and that's why you know that's another advantage of banks or advantage of huge organizations because ultimately as an organization as a entity it doesn't really care you know maybe the people in there care but as an entity it doesn't care it's just doing its job and trading the market so just something to think about if you're happy about forex trading you're ultimately inevitably going to be unhappy so there has to be a way to somehow um, get rid of both of these emotions okay which this is a very controversial topic actually so, so definitely something to think about if you have any questions just uh, hold on to them we'll have a Q&A session at the end uh, hopefully we'll have enough time for that uh, next one no trading strategy so uh, a lot of the times uh, a lot of those things that we talked about before over trading trading too many currency pairs uh, being greedy all of those a lot of those things can be um, Kind of omitted by having a trading strategy if you have a certain step-by-step -step trading strategy that's written down on a piece of paper uh, and it tells you okay open open trades uh, buy trades when this happens uh, set the stop loss at this level set to take profit at this level and uh, you know monitor the trade for five hours or five hours later check on the trade and then close it if this on this condition uh, occur if you have a certain step-by-step -step trading strategy that kind of brings you a step closer also to being cold-blooded about training because you are like a machine you're just implementing these actions and it takes out all those options for you to be greedy over trade trade different currency pairs uh, be emotional about you can still be emotional about your trades of course but you know it, it takes you a step closer to being less emotional about them so not having a trading strategy is a massive psychological pitfall and if you don't have a trading strategy I would highly advise considering uh, looking into creating one even maybe this the things you do right now on Forex maybe they sum up into a trading strategy and maybe you can somehow um, write it down and see see what you come up with and then test it out so trading strategy is important definitely um, next one overcomplicating your strategy so you might have a trading strategy but then you might feel that huh it's too too simple like I'm not getting enough trades or uh, it's it just feels too simple I feel like I need it, it it can't be real that it's so simple and 
it's going to earn me money well it's the the answer here is that it doesn't really matter how simple something is it's about what results you're getting what tests what the tests are showing and if you're trying to overcomplicate your training strategy you're you're either trying to you create more entry opportunities for yourself so you know you have more more things to do or you're just possibly scared of something that's definitely a psychological pitfall so some sometimes uh, training strategies are simple and that's fine and if you want to enter into more trades well then just have two trading strategies well why, what's wrong with that why can't you have one trading strategy for um, one currency pair or one time frame and another current trading strategy for another one if, if they're completely different it's it's totally fine to keep them separate as well next one is being stubborn or not adapting to changing market conditions what does this mean well this means that surprise surprise but markets change uh, all the time and a lot of uh, traders um, try to uh, choose to ignore that choose to be like they choose to not take that into account and pretend that markets are not changing and that what there is working now for them is going to be working forever and that is a major major flaw both psychological statistical and economical in many 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 different ways it's a flaw uh, because that's not the case and markets do change we've we've we even know that from you know the GFC happened and before the GFC some companies were, were profitable after GFC if other companies are profitable some currency pairs change their movements some uh, currency pairs change the movement types and so on and those are like macro events but there's there's all it's all it happens all the time and uh, it, for some one currency pair it might happen like this year for another currency pair might happen next month and so on so it's important to recognize this these moments when the market conditions change and adapt your trading strategy because if it stops working and you continue being stubborn or the trader continues being stubborn and trying to um, continue with that specific trading strategy it'll just create more and more losses until you realize it so it's a matter of when do you realize and that's uh, why it's important to measure certain metrics and KPIs of um, of your trading strategy and seeing uh, how it's going over time so you know you you measure it monthly or every every two months you see what it depends on how often it, it requires you to trade of course and then and you just see uh, how it's been going like has it been underperforming or overperforming and if you can see consistent drop in uh, your trading strategy maybe this it's time to retest it or adjust it rethink your trading strategy and things like that so definitely take that into account and uh, personally I've been there <laughs> put your hand up if you've been there I've been there I've been stubborn I've had um, trading strategies that worked it worked really really fantastically well and I refused to adapt them and what did that end up in that end up in losses luckily it wasn't too much too much losses it was just some losses every time and then I would, I would recognize that I would adjust them I would adjust the code or I would just conditions of entry or exit and so on uh, and then I would uh, move move on but th by the way this adjusting your trading strategy can lead to this over complicating your strategy so if you keep adjusting it and building on modules and every time the market changes you uh, add more rules you will end up over um, over complicating it so sometimes you gotta uh, sit down and really uh, rigorously go through a training strategy just to cut off all the unnecessary stuff and see uh, what is the essence that is actually working or maybe it's not even working anymore and you have to move on to the next one what are we up to okay trading without a stop loss I think we're getting to that and I think this is like number eight should have numbered these by the way I think this is number eight uh, or or maybe even nine all right so we'll see just now trading without a stop loss or moving your stop loss so a major pitfall psychological it can be a pitfall of just not knowing that you need to set a stop loss but also it can be a psychological some people intentionally don't set stop losses because they think that they can uh, decide better when to exit the market uh, it, it all ties in back into being emotionally attached to your trading if you don't set a stop loss and you you just rely on yourself to exit the market whenever you feel like it or whenever you want to then how are you going to guess that moment when it's time to exit okay you'll guess it once twice ten times but out of then on the 20th time 30th time 50th time uh, you, you're just going to even be too invest too heavily invested uh, in terms of time in terms of emotions into your trading and every time it's a judgment call you have to make and that is stress you don't want that uh, unnecessary stress in your life also moving a stop loss is a 
is a sign of um, uh, I guess psychological weakness because you your trading strategy tells you okay set your stop loss at this level and keep it there and then you see the price approaching it and you decide to move the stop loss further away to give it some more room you know sometimes it might work for you but ultimately you're ruining in your trading strategy so you got you got to stick to your trading strategy that's um, the best approach you can take in this situation same thing for trading without out this is by the way yep number 10 so that's 10 points trading without a take profit or moving your take profit same thing um well trading without take profit might not be such a bad thing if your trading strategy implies something like uh your stop loss needs to be moved always like adjusted to follow the price like a trading stop loss or um if your trading strategy, what, what other situations could there be? Or if your trading strategy says you have to exit the trade within uh, after after five hours or after two hours or something like that. So when there is a certain exit point or uh, when your trading strategy tells you that exit the trade when uh, the uh, moving average is crossed in the opposite direction or something. When you have a, a certain rule when you want to exit and you don't have a take profit for that reason, that's cool, that's fine. But if you don't have a take profit for the reason that oh, I'll just exit when I have when I feel I have enough money, <laughs> that's also not a good thing. So you have to make sure that these things also uh, mitigate any emotional uh, components that you have. All right, so now we're moving on to the takeaway tips. Here are our takeaway tips must have realistic expectations don't think you will win every trade need a trading strategy learn to adapt and don't be happy or unhappy instead develop a cold-blooded approach so um they they're only five because some of the top items we talked about are summed up in here and uh, but these are i felt the main ones so you have to have realistic expectations why you come into the forex market uh, don't think you'll win every trade. You will. There will be inevitably losses, and that is something that's just normal. Uh, you need a trading strategy. It helps mitigate a lot of the things we talked about. Learn to adapt because markets change all the time. And don't be emotional. Don't be happy and happy. Instead, develop a cold blood approach uh, to trading. It just should be just a thing you do. Okay, so. I hope you're enjoying this and uh, preparing some questions. We're going to um, we're going to move on to the statistical approach. So, kind of approach to trading that I think uh, works for me and helps me avoid a lot of those psychological pitfalls. And it's kind of a statistical approach. So, trading. Uh, I hate saying trading is a game because trading is not a game, but there's a saying numbers game, so we're going to just stick to that. It's a numbers game. It's uh, it, it doesn't have to be, so it doesn't have to be a numbers game. It can be uh, totally something else. Uh, but when it's a numbers game, I find it's easier to be less emotionally invested and avoid a lot of that psychological stuff that we talked about. And how is it a numbers game? Well, there's a law, uh, a law which is called the law of large numbers. You might have heard to me talk about this if you've uh, listened to that uh, podcast I was on or if you've uh, followed my courses or <laughs> if you watch some of my other videos. So uh, if you haven't uh, or if you have, I think this will be useful. Law of large number numbers is one of my favorite philosophies in life. It's one of my favorite concepts that uh, I follow a lot. And well, a lot of things I do according to the law of large numbers. And what what does the law of large numbers tell us? Well, <laughs> this is the law of large numbers. Um, I know uh, this is, by the way, this is a slide from one of my other courses, completely not related to Forex. It's our programming. Um, and uh, I know it looks confusing, but it can actually be even more confusing. This is a simpler. Uh, simpler to explain, kind of a simpler to present version. There's a there's a whole different complex mathematical uh, formula. But what it basically says is that uh, when you when you're like on the left, n is uh, the sample size, and when the sample size of uh, your well, when the sample size that you're looking at grows, then the average, so x n on the left here. Uh, okay, you can see you should probably see my mouse. So this part here is like the average that line over there represents the average the average in your sample size of a certain metric will 
converge to the expected value of that metric, right? So if your expected value, let's say, um, in terms of uh, Forex, if your expected value of uh, your trades is expected return on your trades is like five five dollars per trade, um, then on average you will, you might get two dollars, you might get seven dollars, you might get seventy dollars. But as as long as your sample grows, what the law of large numbers is telling us, all other things being equal, is that the average in your sample will converge to the expected value. So you'll get closer and closer and closer to that value. So I just need to quickly fix up one slide, the next slide, and I will, uh, we will continue. Just give me one second. Nope, it's not what I was thinking. All right, nearly done. Thanks for your patience. Let's try this. All right, there we go. <laughs> Didn't really work out the way I wanted it, but nevertheless. All right, so that's the law of large numbers. Um, now we're going to look at uh, an example. Like, let's look at an example from real life, which is which will explain how this whole thing works. All right, so here. Uh, I've got three lines, right? So what, what do they represent? We're, well, we're looking at a coin toss. Let's say we're tossing a coin and we've tossed a coin 10 times. So that's over here. So we've done 10 coin tosses. That's our sample size. Well, we know that the expected value uh, of expected number of times the heads and tails should come up is about 50-50. Well, when you toss a coin seven, uh, 10 times, it's quite likely that you might get seven heads and three tails, right? So that's a 70-30% split. And that's totally normal. If you toss a coin right now, you might get 7-3, or you might even get 9-1 or 8-2. But if you toss a coin 100 times, then getting 70 and 30, 70 heads and 30 tails is very less likely. It's more likely that you might get like 52 heads, 48 tails, or 50, 55 heads, 45 tails. So that's close to like 52, 48% split. If you toss a coin 1,000 times, you're like, there will be some deviation, but again, it'll be maybe 500 to 498, or might be 510, 490. So that's the deviation that you'll have. And so then the split is 50.2%, 49.8%, something close to that. So basically you can see that we are converging, we're slowly getting closer and closer and closer to the 50-50 split. The higher the sample size, the closer your uh, measured split, the average, is gonna get to your final result. To your expected uh, value, which is 50-50. And so that's the same rule I apply in trading, that the more trades I have, the more closer the average is going to be to my uh, trading strategy expected return. And so what does this mean for Forex? That's exactly what it means. And I'm not saying that you should go and over trade and you should create many, many trades. No, it's just that I look for trading strategies that create more trades. I'll give you a, my favorite example, which is a hyper uh, <laughs> hyper example of that. So this is a statement from one of my uh, live, well, one of my old live accounts, but it's just a beautiful example when uh, I traded, so you can see here, total trades, and this is a period of, I think it was about six months, 2,811 trades. So even if we say that this was a whole year, right? Even if this, if you could, if you can do 2,811 trades in a year, and we know that there's only two about 250 working days in a year. That means you're doing over 10 trades per day, right? And what does that mean? Well, of course, this is this is quite impossible to, to do it manually. It's it was a robot or a, a, a portfolio of robots trading on the account. Um, and so what happened here is that the expected payoff here you can see per trade. So all of these stats they become more real in my my feeling and my understanding. So the expected payoff is $6.91 per trade, right? Or profit factor is 1.42. So what that means is that, well, that's exactly your um, expected value. So that per trade, you're, you're supposed to be earning $6.91. That's what your trading strategy, the expected value it has. So when you have that many trades, what that means according to the low large number is that your average in your sample size will be 
close will be converging to this expected payoff. Of course, if there it hasn't been massive changes in the market uh, or the currency pair has experienced some drastic turnarounds or something like that. So uh, if all the conditions are the same as when you did your tests, then the expected your average will be converging or getting closer and closer to the expected payoff. Why, why is that good? Well, that because because that's good because it gives you certainty and helps you get rid of that emotional factor. So you know if you do have a loss, well, that's all in line. In the long term, I'm going to be very close to $6.91 per trade on average. By the way, just so that you're not um, uh, getting uh, um, any like uh, wrong ideas, these uh, circles, the drops in red circles, those, those are actually uh, withdrawals. So I'm going to uh, put the comments here. So 2,811 trades, those are withdrawals. So you can see at the top, I withdrew 19,437 uh, dollars from this account and you can see that the total net profit here uh, was 19,400 so indeed these weren't like lost trades these were just me like cashing money out of the account uh, because it was quite a prolonged period of time all right so just uh, that's that's the summary here that this uh, once again this approach might not be the best for everybody especially like for me it worked because um, I, I use uh, Forex robots and um, I uh, like even if I trade manually, I would still think of the approach like this because it does give me that uh, confidence that I'm going to like the results I'm going to be seeing are going to probably be close to what I see on the tests. Uh, but so that's one of the ways to get rid of the emotional factors of trading. And uh, you might find a different way, or you might think about this way. Uh, definitely have a look at the law of large numbers. It's it's not a, like there's a lot of assumptions that have to be in place that uh, so for it to apply in trading, for instance, like market conditions shouldn't change over that period of time or shouldn't change drastically, which they do. So you're applying it with only a certain level of approximation. But for me, it does give me that level of confidence. Um, all right. So what are we going to talk about now? Just one more comment on that is that. Note, this is not the same as over trading. So do not just go back into trading and say, oh, Kirill said we need, <laughs> I need to uh, create as many orders as possible to apply the law of large numbers. No, it's not going to work like that. You first need to have a trading strategy that requires you to have many orders and then test it and then see what the expected values are going to be or the val averages on, on the tests and then perhaps if all the assumptions are correct and you've, you've done it correctly, maybe that low of large numbers will apply and what you will be seeing going forward is going to be close to what you saw in the tests. So that's just the philosophy behind it. Don't confuse it with over trading. Once again, might not be for everyone, uh, just one of the ways you can get rid of that emotional component. Other ways of trading are totally, totally fine. The, even doing one trade per day, one trade per week can still be a viable trading strategy so don't think i'm trying to discourage you in that sense all right war stories um i don't have the statements from back then because it was a very long time ago um first war story is uh, i started trading forex in april 2007 so i'm just gonna i'm gonna run through what what uh what happened back then i started trading april 2007 demo account very very great was very exciting um to we were very excited to learn how to use metatrader 4 i think i made my first uh, trade and it was profitable on the british pound and uh, you know so many emotions so happy i can make money super excited can you see already psychological pitfall getting excited about trades but you know it's it's ex you can excuse that because it's the first time first time uh, even experiencing this thing and then uh, in uh, back in 2007 again put uh, create my first account hundred dollars uh, <laughs> and of course didn't didn't have a training strategy pitfall psychological pitfall and lost that account literally in a month second account I think I made it like two hundred dollars or something like that well first two accounts I remember its total was about three hundred dollars and second account uh, maybe it had a hundred dollars and then I added some more money or something like that when I started losing um, and again lost everything didn't have a didn't have a trading strategy uh, probably traded too many currency pairs because I was like searching for something and uh, was um, over trading as well most likely okay so those are uh, two early on paid pitfalls and then I took a break then I said okay no more trading real accounts until I get this thing sorted until I understand what I'm doing 
and all the way until um, somewhere like from the end of 2007 until the end of 2008. So for a year or nearly a year, I was not trading a real accounts. I, I might be I might be confusing a, a thing or two here. Like I might have had one of those real accounts, like with a little bit of funds on them, but there was no massive focus on real account trading. It was all demo. It was all um, create uh, learn MQL4. So I spent a whole year doing that, and then uh, like teamed up with some traders here and there who had ideas, and I was coding them and I was learning along the way. So I spent a lot of time learning. And then at the end of 2008, finally launched a real account with a thousand dollars to trade um, the what was we trading? I think it was the Euro Canadian dollar uh, currency pair and the British Canadian dollar currency pair. And um, yep, yeah, so I launched a thousand dollar account uh, after I've practiced everything, developed a trading strategy, actually coded in, uh, into a robot. Um, so there were elements where I found trading strategies and then I combined them uh, with my own ideas and made some adjustments and so on. And it was all ready to go, launched it. And I remember I launched it in October or November 2008. And then came February 2009. So in those three months, November, December, January, I turned $1,000 into $15,000. And that was insanely great insanely great and of course I was emotional about it of course I was super happy at the start when uh, when uh, the trades started coming in but then kind of like it became normal oh yeah the robots making money okay cool I'm going to <laughs> what was I doing back then I'm going back I'm going back to uni right I'm going to uni I'll be back uh, I'll be back in a few days um, and it was just like making money and I was you know after a while it became normal but then February 2009 struck and what happened is Overnight, I think it was like 27th of February or some at the end of February 2009. What happened is in one night, uh, I lost in literally in one night, I lost ten thousand dollars. So that's 60 percent of the account, 66 percent of the account, uh, in one night. So I just woke up there was instead of fifteen thousand dollars, it was five. So somebody just took that first digit off the account, and um, that somebody was me because. What, what 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 did we do wrong? What did I do wrong there? Well, it was a psychological pitfall. I was being greedy. I did not know about money management, and I set insane lots for this account. So if you if you've done my course on money management, then we talk about that there about uh, the pitfall of the Larry Williams method. That's what I fell into there, and yeah. It was a massive loss. But the funny thing is that I didn't, I wasn't upset about it. I, I just looked at it and I was like, whoa, wow, that's a lot of money. But I didn't feel bad about it because uh, it's a different feeling is because I hadn't invested that money in myself. I just made that money and I never actually saw, I never withdrew it. So it was never physically there, but still I learned my lesson and I learned that uh, money management is, is important and that's kind of in, in line with not being greedy. And since then I did a lot of research on money management and um, yeah so that was a major major war story that I can always tell now but it did cost me quite a lot all right so we are through with the main part of the presentation we have 14 minutes left and so what do you guys want to do do you want to type up some questions for now um, so that we can maybe go through a few questions and then in the last five minutes or so, I will show you the special preview of what's coming next on Forex Boat. So it's going to be exciting. Uh, let's type in some questions. I'm going to read through them and then we'll move on to our special preview. I might, um, what might I do? Um, so, okay, I'm just going to switch it back to, while I'm answering these questions, I'm going to switch it back to uh not screen share but my there we go you should see that um let me have let me bring these questions up how do i get them here all right so let's start from the from the bottom um <laughs> take it from the top um okay Car carolus or uh, i hope i'm pronouncing this wrong, right <laughs> carolus any sources you'd recommend uh to read up on developing a strategy Okay, that's that's a good one. 
uh, there was a good book about developing a strategy. I actually wanted to create a course on developing strategies, but I haven't gotten to it. Um, there was a good book. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. I will, I, what, what will I do? I will post it. <sighs> okay, so this is what we're going to do. Um, we're going to soon, uh, we're going to have a. I can't, I can't reveal all of this because it's coming up. But anyway, uh, soon there will be a, a, a place for us all to hang out. Uh, wink, wink. <laughs> and uh, I will post it there eventually. But for now, if you are very eager to get that answer, uh, just email me, please, Carolus, and I'll look at the book. I'll, I'll let you know. But um, other than that, there, there's just this one book that really breaks it down in, on how to um, go through the steps of developing a training strategy. Other than that, other than that, what else? Um, it's more about understanding what you like, what you feel like in trading, what you're comfortable with. Because you know, one thing is to find a trading strategy or something like that. Another thing is to uh, tailor it to yourself. So ultimately, you have to understand what you feel like and then just research those indicators or research those methodologies and so on. And it, it kind of starts falling together. You know, try this, try that, try, try, try this, and then... And then the final uh, tweaks to the train strategy, you just add them on, like the stop loss or the trailing stop loss or whatnot, and then you still test it out. So a lot of it is testing and seeing what you feel like. Uh, Jay, best strategies for newbie traders? Uh, <laughs> um, was my reaction is just because uh, is this is general advice, and I have to be careful about uh, providing um, specific financial investment advice. And I probably can't can't just give you a strategy that that is the best because every person's situation is different. Um, what I would look into, like if you're just starting out, it's a demo card, you want to practice something, uh, just take something simple. Take like the moving averages. You'll be surprised at what results you can get. So like you know, moving averages crossing each other. You know, if you're seeing a channel here and there. We had a few examples of that in the uh, forex trading A to Z course. So maybe have a look there. Um, John, how, when do you decide to retire a winning strategy that turns to losses? Well, it's no longer a winning strategy if it turns to losses, right? So um, there's a method called, which I call, I don't know what it's called actually, but uh, I don't know if it exists <laughs> other than uh, in, my, in my head. Um, it's called uh, rolling optimization. So we discussed it in the course on Forex robots. Uh, on optimization and testing for Forex robots, which actually doesn't require any MQL4 knowledge. So it's a good course to understand how to optimize Forex robots, but also a good course to understand how to optimize trading strategies. So if you look, I, I think it's even a free preview lecture. Or something. So you, you just look at one lecture by itself, rolling optimization. Uh, you will see what, what, what uh, my recommendation on that is. It's like uh, basically you try to, you try to, improve your trading strategy on a monthly basis and if you can improve it then uh, and you see like this one's going down but you know the new parameters or the new uh, tweaks that you've done the tra trading strategy they allow you to improve it then you put them together and you do like a challenger and uh, what's it called? it's called a champion and challenger test where your current uh, strategy is incumbent it's the champion and you've got a challenger and you can put them side by side so you, for instance you might put one on demo on a real or if you want the same uh, quotations and you split a lot and see which one performs better and then if the new one outperforms then you replace the old one. Uh, Papa. Mary what do you think of Forex binary options? Mm, a good question I don't think much about them I've uh, I understand what they are I have uh, to, to an extent, I I have talked to people about them, but uh, to be honest, they, they can too simplified. I think they're they're kind of a mass product that uh, is super simplified for traders to be able to uh, not have to think too much, you know, like plus minus and and things like that. So I would probably you know, I, I can't give advice on this, I, and moreover, I'm I'm not licensed to give you advice on this. So sorry about that. Uh, I I've just heard of them, but I think they're oversimplified. I'm not that interested in them. Not not at the moment, anyway. My, that might change. Uh, okay, great, great. Uh, Ted, how assess when market changes and previous profitable strategy begins to lose? Happened to me many times. Well, that's probably goes back to what I, I just we just discussed based on John's question about um, rolling optimization. So that's one of the ways. But also, uh, you know, 
maybe some fundamental factors might help you. Maybe uh, look at some different, uh, you know, look at how the chart has changed, read some uh, reviews uh, of market analysts and so on. So that's maybe like some trends in the industries, things like that. Maybe all those things might give you some heads up. All right, so we've got six minutes left. The questions are out of questions. We've got everybody still online, we, and even, we've even got a bit more people. That's awesome. Okay, that's good. So now comes a special preview. I'm going to switch to um, I'm going to switch to my screen sharing mode, uh, or should I? I will switch to my screen sharing mode. Uh, well, well, let me explain first. All right. So thank you for sticking around for so long. Uh, all all thirty six uh, lovely. Uh, guests that we have online and what's going to happen in the next month it's super exciting we've been working towards this since uh, since last year actually and as you know forex boat uh, has already turned two years old in April this year and so we're on our third year and we're going to launch finally a brand new website It's gonna be a brand new website It's gonna be a trading Academy uh, and you've already seen the logo. Thank you very much for helping select that logo. Uh, those who voted, that was uh, back, I think, in February that we voted for that logo. And based on that logo, we've developed a huge new website with a uh, lot of new, like, completely everything is different. And it's going to have, it's going to have an academy. It's going to have lots of, um, it's going to have the web, the webinars. It's going to have a community. It's going to have lots of lots of fun stuff. And now I'm going to show you some previews of what it will look like, so that you can really judge for yourself. All right. So let me give me a second. All right. So I've got some images here. Let me show you around. So let's start with the home page. This is what the home page will look like. All right. Are you ready? There we go. So that's going to be our homepage. That's the logo up at the top. That's that's going to be like a button. It's going to you're going to be able to log in. Then you scroll down. Then you'll be like some of the numbers are here incorrect. Then you'll have um, a quick intro message from me. Then you'll have um, some uh, information about the uh, platform. Then some testimonials. Um, then we're going to uh, you can get like the free membership is always going to be there. We're going to add some proper uh, SC on stuff here. So we, these color schemes, by the way, came from the logo that you guys voted on. So that logo, the orange and gray boat that you voted on, that's where the color schemes came from. Totally. Um, let's see what else do we want to have a look at. All right. So for instance, here's going to be our courses page. So you can see that that's going to be when, once you're in um, the uh, membership area, uh, you will be able to access the courses. And um, I'll talk about the launch uh, just now. What we're going to be launching. Uh, so then it's going to be this is going to be the responsive. So we had some designers work on all of this. So we're going to have some responsive stuff. So you're going to have it on iPads. It's going to look like that, or even on your iPhones or uh, Mac phone, <laughs> not Mac phones, uh, Android phones, and so on. What else? What else is interesting here? Um, so this is going to be our features page. This is what you what you will get in the and the academy will have both like uh, the free version where you can we just get the free courses that uh, the free video series or you can become a member. So it's going to be a, a membership based academy. It's going to be pretty cool and that's what it's going to be all about. So we're going to have webinars. We're going to have um, the uh, hangout place, so we're going to hang out on Facebook and other places. It's going to be a community of traders. I love this page. Love this page. 404 page. All right. So I'm not going to show you everything. I won't reveal everything, but that's that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah. So we're going to have a community of traders and everybody learning together, having fun. And what did I want to show you here? Oh, okay. This one more thing on the home page. So by the way, this is a quick uh, quick note. Um, these testimonial blocks are free right now. They are completely open for grabs. So if you want your photo and your testimonial to be featured on the Forex Boat homepage, then 
just don't wait. Uh, write up a quick testimonial. You can see how big it should be. Like just that's the amount of text it should have, uh, pretty much. And just send it to us if you really like Forexbot and you've learned a lot. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, we need a high quality photo. It doesn't have to be a professional photo like here, but it has to look. You know, it has to be high quality. It has to have your face in it, and you. You should be smiling. And if you want your face uh, and your testimonial to be featured on the Forex Board homepage, definitely send your testimonial to us. So just uh, send it to support at forexboat.com. Martin will have a look at them. And uh, just uh, at the in your um, subject line, just type in uh, testimonial, just that subject line. And if you send us your testimonials, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to select the top three ones, and we're going to feature them on the Forex Board page. Uh, homepage and throughout the website. So definitely send those through and you have an opportunity to uh, be part of our uh, homepage. So only three spots that are left or only three spots that are available in the first place. All right, so that was uh, that's the Academy and I'm just gonna go back to uh, video. All right, so hope you enjoyed that. Thanks guys, a lot of, a lot of you are saying looks great, cool website um, and uh, looks great as well. Awesome. That's that's really cool. So that's what's happening. It's happening at start of July. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna release the exact date, um, but uh, it's going to start at uh, somewhere. Uh, it's gonna be somewhere around the sixth of July or something like that. And uh, definitely look out for that. It'll be a, a launch. There'll be an early bird offer. So make sure that you are uh, looking at your email around those dates because. Once those go out, there'll be a very short period of time that uh, for existing students, for existing um, loyal students, we're going to be doing a very, very special uh, intro into this new platform. And uh, super excited about that, part two. And thanks a lot for uh, coming today. Uh, thanks a lot for attending this webinar. Uh, definitely talked about some interesting stuff on the psychological front. That brings us to about one hour total. You'll be hearing from us more, so we're going to be sending out some uh, more interesting uh, things throughout this week uh, and uh, next week. And then, yeah, I'll see you on the next webinar or I'll see you on the, the launch of the Forex Boat Trading Academy. Thanks a lot and uh, of course, seeing you next time. Until then, happy trading. See you guys.